Beijing Science and Educational Film Studio. Sculptors at work, such spirit and devotion are moving indeed. Their creations leave indelible impressions on all who see them. This is art of quite a different genre. A microcosmic world is opened up before you. A piece of ivory the size of grain of rice. On it is sculptured the full text of a 400 character poem in Huai Su style, magnified thousands of times. This is a sample of miniature sculpture, Mr. Chu Ru's astonishing art and consummate skill. Scenerist director, Li Chao Dong. Photography, Liu Ji Qin. But that is humanly impossible, some would say. Let us watch Mr. Chu at work. He tells us, in miniature sculpture, one cannot see what one is doing. One relies on experience, on intuition. These four characters, meaning sculpture through the spirit, give a concise description of what miniature sculpture is. <laughs> a contrivance has been made for observing how miniature sculpture is executed. The flask is for focusing the light. A microscopic lens is mounted on the camera. When one is on the mountain, one cannot see what the mountain is like. A grain of millet looks deformed when blown up, but the calligraphy even smaller than a grain of millet is an exact diminutive replica of the handwriting of the Tang Dynasty calligrapher Zhang Xu. Handwriting by Zhen Banqiao of Qin Dynasty. Handwriting by the great modern writer Lu Xun. And by Guo Mo Ruo are all easily recognizable. And paintings too. Just look at these plum blossoms. Just a few strokes of the carving knife and the boughs and branches are there. Some are in watercolour, some in oil colour crane or clear paint.
plum blossoms herald the coming of spring. Calligraphy, painting and seal forming an organic whole in this miniature universe. Many famous artists speak very highly of Chiru. Wu Zhouren, Li Ku Chan and others have given him works of their own as an expression of their admiration and encouragement. This is an eulogy by Dao Pu Chu. His unique ability and consummate skill are not innate, but come through practice. Chiru first concentrated on acquiring great skill in calligraphy. The forest of Stili in Xi'an was a treasure trove which he freely drew upon. As he's busy at daytime with his work, he can only devote his night time to practice his calligraphy. He is at it, night after night, for years and years. Drawing and painting is also part of this exercise. The mountains seem to be looming up. But no, it's the boat that is moving. Many a person lavished his time and talent on frivolities during the Ten-Year Cultural Revolution. But what was Chi Fu doing in those days? These bamboos will bear witness to his diligence. The following words voice his heartfelt wishes. achieve perfection in calligraphy, drawing and sculpturing is not the whole story. 
to develop a sensitive feel for the precision wielding of the sculptor's knife, he has to practice sculpture on porcelain, brass, agate, or other material. In miniature sculpture, he cannot see what he's doing. This sensitive feel is the only perception he can fall back on. His flights of imagination, which win at will in artistic creation, are guided down to earth and materialized through rapt attention and deft manipulation. Let us see what he can do on a strain of hair. A hair slightly flattened on which calligraphy in regular, cursive, official and seal scripts is carved. Chiru's own style of writing, in which one senses rhythm and beauty. Crabs carved in the style of Qi Bai Shi. In his effort to duplicate a masterpiece, Chiru's routine procedure is first to grasp the essence of a work and then to copy it again and again until he is able to make a replica at ease without referring to the original. He does not take up his tool before all this is done. The four crabs are superbly executed, one different from another, with fine distinctions in shade and hue and finer discrimination of detail, and with the downy effect on the pincers faithfully reproduced. hawk on a grain of rice, a microscopic replica of the superscription on a stele proved to have been erected over 1700 years ago. go through the eye of a needle is a metaphor referring to something that is next to impossible. But look, this camel train is now performing the impossible. An elephant beside a mound beam. A panda frolicking on a grain of rice. A magpie as large, or rather as small, as a grain of millet. The Great War and a sesame seed. A new vista opens up before you under the microscope, and Churu's art and skill fill you with pleasure and admiration.
Ichiro's art lauded in newspaper reports. Former Japanese Prime Minister Ohira was full of admiration after he'd seen a work by Chiru. This is included in the art collection of Margaret II, Queen of Denmark. sculpture is regarded by many as the gem of their collections. Chiru's art is known throughout the world. is a fuller, even more purposeful life. We expect that more masterpieces will be produced by him. Considering what miracles Chiru could perform on a grain of rice, it might not be too far-fetched to ask ourselves if it's possible for us to follow the example of the eight immortals soaring over the ocean with each showing his special prowess and to try to show what we can do on the 9.6 million square kilometers of our sacred land. <laughs> 